how is it related with the society and it is related with society because most of the knowledge the skills the various you learn they are from the society and they are they are usually passed on to the learner a learner is somebody who has not been socialized and they are being socialized now as they are being socialized they are being educated to fit in this society another point is that a social science concerned with educational aims methods so when you talk of educational aims what does this what is the target of educating the young what do you want them to become after they have attained the, the highest level of education methods what types of methods are used in educating this person institutions what types of institutions are there in the society that are available to where the learners will get this education administration who are the people who do the work of administration in these institutions of education and curricula the curricula is you 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 learned about the curricula last semester so you know what the curriculum is all that which should be learned in different subjects that will help you to attain the education that is required in the specific area of learning so associations concerned with the educational aims methods institutions administration curricula in relation to the economic political religious social and cultural forces of the society in which they function so all those the aims the method the institution the administration the curricula are in the in the relation of this economics why do we need economics in education money is involved political they are the the, the government and the political part of the of any country are the ones who come out with policies and the rule the rules and regulations and they maybe they are the ones who will give uh, the concept to start a, a particular uh, a particular system and the like we have religious how is religion involved in education for example the, the different denominations that we have in our country are they involved in in preparation of curricula in the teaching methods in the types of institutions that we have etc so the the socio and cultural forces the the culture our, is our culture does it determine the type of education that we are given and the like in short how society affects education and how education affects society so all these areas are the socio or the, the social aspect of our lives and so and all these are the educational aspects of the part of institutions so how education affects and is affected by society another definition is that education is a process of acquiring acquiring knowledge skills attitudes that can make one fit in the society that's why I said Edwin Kariuki had uh, given us most of the, the things that we, we the, the meaning of education as most educational subjects. I'm not saying that others are wrong. It's about if you are doing these courses starting with the E last week, I said that E, E, F, N, E, M, P, E, P, S which other those are the major educational subjects and they have most of them will have education revolving on this definition but it will be either added or defined according to that specific subject so when you come to a definition of a specific of specific terms you define them according to a specific subject according to curriculum development according to uh, psychology of education according to history of education according to sociology of education etc 
for there to be a sociology of education, education must itself be social. So we are going now to look at what makes education to be social. And by that, we we'll now go to the next subheading, education is a social process. So we are looking at education itself is social. So why is education social? Education is a social process. Education as a social process. Education is a social process because it involves learning. That is the first point. It involves learning, which is itself social. So learning is social process because... So the first point about why education is a social process is that it involves learning. And learning itself is social because we learn from and through others. You cannot learn. Most of the things that we learn have to be, excuse me, for the time being, don't uh, lift your hands. Tafadar. I'll give you the, the, the chance to lift up your hands later. Education is a social process because learn, uh, Learning, we learn from us, uh, we learn from and through others. We learn from and through others. Use the, the, the public chat if you have a question. Don't lift your hand. We learn from and through others. That means you cannot learn on your own. We learn what has been learned uh, what has been learned by others Corinne's career Corinne's cor keep career can you and and raise your hand we learn what we learn is what has been learned by others the teachers and what we discover on our own we validate validate it using other people's view and opinion one cannot learn by themselves we have said that education is social because it involves learning and we have said learning is social this is number one of education as a social process learning is social it's a social process because we learn from and through others that means when we learn from we can observe what others are doing and we imitate them. We can listen to what others are, are saying, and after they have said it, we do it again. We learn through, it means that others are teaching us. We learn from and through others. So others will be teaching us. And then what we, we learn is what has already been learned. So there is nothing, you have heard of the saying that there is nothing new that is happening now it has already been seen it has already been done it has already been had previously so whatever we are learning others have already learned about it and then because they have learned about it they will teach us that is how we learn through others they teach us and what we discover on our own we have heard of people who are very creative coming up with new ideas coming up with new things, innovate, innovations, they discover on our own, we validate it using other people's view. So whatever you have, you have come up with on your own, it cannot be said to be new if others have not seen it or have not looked at it and said that, Nakweli, this is something new. It has not been there before. So it has to be validated by others. Other people have to say, indeed, this is something that is good. It's something new that has not been seen before. So what we learn on our own, we must we validate it using other people's view and opinions. One cannot learn by themselves. Another point is that we learn by interacting with others. Mostly, whenever we are learning, we will learn 
when we are interacting, when we are in contact with other people, talking to them, doing things together. We learn uh, uh, from interacting with others. Therefore, learning is therefore a social process. Because of those three points, we call learning a social process. Number two, our educators are social agents. Our educators are social agents. We learn and get educated from our families, peers, friends, neighbors, teachers, from religious institutions, from the media, from the government, and so on. So in the first, the first point we have said that we learn through others. We learn from and through others. So those who, through others are the social agents, people who have been pressed there by the society to teach us. And these people, are. we start learning from the family. We are born in a nuclear family. And from that nuclear family, we start learning. When we start going to school, we come across friends who are at the same age, uh, who are our age mates. Those are the peers. Friends, we, we, befriend, uh, uh, we befriend other people who come to be um, in a relationship with us, and we also learn from them. We learn from our neighbors, teachers, and the others. The content number three, the content of our education is social. So why is education a social process? The third one is the content of our education is social. That means whatever we learn is gotten from the society. The content of our education. For example, you are learning different subjects in, in your university, in this course. What is in that, in the, the content of the topics in those units that you are learning has been gotten from the society. That's what we are talking about in this point. The content of education and its curriculum, whether formal or informal, is derived from society, developed by society, sanctioned by society. Derived, that means it comes from the society, developed by people within the society are the ones who came up with that curriculum, with that syllabus that you are learning and the like. Sanction means that they are proved that it is that the people within that society approved that this, the, the curriculum is okay to be taught to our, our, our learners. The number four, education is supposed to serve society. Stroke education has a social aim. So this is the fourth number, that education has social aims. It is aimed at specific things within the society, to serve the society. So what are the aims? Number one, education is aimed at producing socially productive individuals. You are being educated now so that after the, at the end of your education, when you are now released to go to the society, you become a productive member of that society. You start earning a living. When you start learn, earning a living, you'll be able to take care of yourself and at the same time, you'll be taking care of people who are near you. You'll be buying things from the, the, the shop that is near you. So you'll be spreading money and you have been helping that shop, shopkeeper to, um, to continue with his business and, it's, and so many other things. You become a productive person in the society. Number two, much of the content in education is about how to conduct oneself and live in a society. So as you are being educated, you are being uh, taught how to behave so that you can fit in that society. There are people who are misfit in the society. They may have gone through several levels of education up to the highest level, even PhD, and still continue to be misfit misfits but as we are being educated we are we say that education acquisition of knowledge skills various moral morals beliefs and the like uh, and attitudes so all the knowledge the skills the values the morals the you are learning how to conduct yourself when you are acquiring that 
and how to live in the society. You are able to, to be integrated in the society and have harmony when you are living with others. The knowledge passed on is aimed at ensuring that individuals know about their society and their place in it. So the knowledge that it has been passed on as you, you are being educated as an individual you start with your family. You know that you belong to your to the Kerubos family or Kari. clans you are part of that village and then you are part of that, that you come when you are asked where do you come from when where is your home area so you tell us you come from kisi maybe you come from nyamira you come from homabe you can even go to the village the location the village the location the location the division or that you are part of the society and you should know your society what are you in that side I have never brought for you member who is a mistake we are we are taught to love and appreciate our culture and identify with it we are taught to love and appreciate our culture and identify with it. So as you are being from the time you entered, you start learning about your culture before you go to school. As you go to school, as you go to school, you will also learn about the, your culture because some in some of the, the subjects that you learn from primary, secondary, going on, you learn about your culture. So you will learn to appreciate your culture. For example, if you are Luo, you know what Luos do. You have been brought up. To, uh, to to know some of the facts, the skills, the values, the moral, the beliefs of that culture. And as you learn about it, you you love it and you appreciate who you are because of that. Then education will also assist in the attitudes. Attitudes thoughts are meant to give us positive view of our society and more motivate us to live positive, uh, cooperatively and peacefully in society. We say that acquisition of knowledge, skills, attitudes, values, morals, and all that. So attitudes. Most of you may have, before you came or you started learning with people from different tribes, people from different cultures, the attitude that you had formed had been uh, you had acquired it from your parents or your siblings. And when we acquire our attitudes from the people who are close to us, they may be biased against other culture, other tribes. But when you continue with your education and you come across people from different cultures and you learn part, uh, some of their cultures, you start appreciating them and you, you now change. Maybe the negative part of the attitude that you had about other cultures. So the attitudes are taught are meant to give us positive views of our society. So whatever news that you have learned about another culture have helped you to have positive view of that uh, uh, other cultures and you are able now to live harmon harmoniously and cooperatively and peacefully in the society. Another point is that education is therefore social therefore socially useful that means 
we have looked at all these points. Um, that, that is six points, the aims of education in the society. We can, from that, we can say that education is useful. Effects, education affects and is affected by society. This is number five of why education is a social process. Number five. Education affects and is affected by society. For example, it promotes social mobility while at the same time enhancing social stratification. What do we mean by social mobility? You'll come across this term so many times. When you come across social mobility, it is not migration, as most of you will say. Social, so when we call, talk about social mobility, it is not moving from shags to, to town. It is about the social classes we talked about last week. Social classes, we have the lower, the middle, the upper class in society. From the poor, those who are moderate, they are not poor, they are not rich, and then we have the rich in the society. When you talk of social mobility, it is move, education helps us to move from the lower level to the middle level or from the middle to the upper level depending on the jobs that we get or the businesses that we keep in a, in our uh, we, we start in our society so education affects and is affected by society so it promotes social it promotes social mobility while at the same time enhancing social stratification when you you get educated, you are from a poor family and you are from a poor family and you get a very good job after completion of your, of your studies, a well-paying job. Your family had a maybe two-roomed house, now you are earning a hundred thousand shillings or 50,000 and you decide, I want my parents to be living in a good house. So you construct them, you construct for them a better house. And then from there, you pro be providing for their needs. Maybe you will help them to educate your other siblings. And from that, you have placed their, 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 their social class. From that lower class, maybe to middle class all upper lower class and from there because of the salary that you're getting you continue to do things for your family and yourself and you uplift to yourself to another class that is social mobility from lower to upper upper class and it can be either it can also be going down from upper to down if you don't work well you have been born born, born up born in a, a good uh, a good family that are, are rich and then when you go to school you are not interested in school because you you know your parents are, are rich and therefore you cannot miss anything so if you don't put any effort in your studies what will happen you fail in your examination will you get a good job no maybe your parents are fed up with you they will leave you to do your own things so you'll fall down from the upper class to maybe lower class because you have not put any effort. So social mobility may be, you go up or down or horizontal. When you talk of enhancing social stratification, education enhances social stratification. That is the division within the society, the different classes within the society. Look at those people you are learning with in primary school who did not go to secondary school are you at the same level when you go back to school when, when you go back to your home village are you are you put at the same level ama unaonekana wewe umesoma mpaka university you are better off so though you have not started earning a salary the level that the society will put you at will be different from the person that you are schooling with in primary na hakuenda secondary. Ama yule alikuwa meenda secondary na yeye, haka maliza form 4 na hakuenda university. You are not at the same level. People outside there will look at you 
differently. That is called social stratification, division, dividing people within the society according to their education. Another point is that ed uh, education is affected by the, by the society. Society, as indicated above, determines the curriculum and the content of education. For example, education is affected by the society. Look at what has happened because of the pandemic. Has education be, um, been affected? The pandemic affected society. People were affected by the coronavirus. And therefore, society was taking measures. Are those measures taking, uh, affecting education? Today, I'm teaching at home while you are, wherever you may be. Maybe some are in school, some are in your, in, at home. Some of you are in your houses, maybe in the library or the like. That is, education has been affected by the society because of what is happening. Other areas, other things also in the society affects education. For example, you have heard of the CBC uh, curriculum. How, uh, because of the unemployment in the society, the education system have been changed so that it can cater for that unemployment, teaching skills or interest areas of the students so that after they have completed their education, they can go to start um, uh, or to start maybe earning from that those areas. That is also society affects education. Society decides the role and place of education, the role and place of education institution. So the, the society is the one that, for example, they will say that if you are in an area where there is no uh, primary school nearby, people within that area will say that we need a school because our children are going to have a school that is very far and they are getting tired and they are very small. And therefore, they decide that we need a school in this village. And when they put their petition to the, the people in, in charge of the IIT, they will go ahead and say that maybe the, the chief, the, the DO or the MCA or the, the, the MP will say that we need a school in this area. So then they are the ones who decide the role and place of education in the institution. They will decide, we want a headmaster from this society. We want the leaders in the, in the, in the university to come from this society and the like. Uh, then we have a brief history, historical overview of sociology of education. Modern sociology was born out of the Industrial Revolution and the increasing awareness of the radical shifts in the social structure. You covered in history of education in other subjects like history. <coughs> Sociology of education had a less certain beginning when it, is, it was suggested sociolo sociologists questioned what would be its meaning and function. However, two scholars were able to show not only its need but what its likely, its likely subject matter would be. The first one is Emil Dakin, 1858 to 1917, and what he said about education. Emil Dakin showed that education comprised of themes, conditions, and practices, and characteristics that needed a sociological consideration. Dakin theorized 
that education is social in origin. This means that it comes from the society. It's a social thing. That is, it is owned by the society. It's a, a social in character. It reflects the behavior of society. It, it, it is social in function. That is, it's the needs of the society. That's why. as attained scientifically using sociological methods. That means you can study these features. You can go to a school and look whether these features of, of education are, are reflected in whatever happens in that school. That's what we are saying that it is it needs to be ascertained scientifically using sociological methods. Last week we talked about research. When you are doing research, you are ascertaining something that is going on. So it can be ascertained or you, one can study and come up with, with um, the facts of what is going on in the society. Emil Duncan's Sociology of Education. This was on education. And then this is on sociology of education. According to Duncan, so accordingly, Duncan suggested that sociology of education should focus on current social facts of education and their sociological functions. So current social facts of education and their sociological functions. What is happening in education and what are the functions of those facts or those things that are happening? The relationship between education and social cultural change. Relationship between education and social cultural change. Look at uh, your society or your cultural background, the culture of your grandparents and your culture currently, is it the same? Or have you adapted some, or have you changed some things, some ways of doing things because of what is happening in the world? The cultural change. When we come across, or when we are being educated, we come across several cultures, and therefore we'll get some things done, but done by others and imitate them, 
as we continue to have some of our own culture. So the relationship between education and social cultural change, cross-cultural and comparative research in various types of educational systems. Cross-cultural means that you look at different cultures. For example, we are taught in English. English is a, a foreign language. It's not a, a, an African language. We have borrowed it and some of the cu European culture, some of the American culture, we have borrowed all that. So cross-cultural and comparative research in various types of educational systems. So whatever systems of education we have, we have gotten it from different, different uh, continents, not even countries, from different continents. When you look at the CBC, when you come to um, EFN 402, we'll see that it may have been borrowed from India, from, from China, from Japan, from, from uh, America, from Europe, etc. So cross-cultural cross -cultural and comparative research in various types of educational systems. So we are saying that sociology of education is about different cultures coming up, uh, uh, being brought about by comparative research, comparing different cultures and how they have educated their young ones and borrowing that. Another one is that the classroom and school as an ongoing social system, the classroom and school. We said last week, I said that the classroom is a small society. The school is also a small society. Duncan argued that the aim of education is to transform what he called a social being into a. Ah. So you, you are as you are, you are beginning your education, you are a social. When you are educated, you become social being. A social being into a social being. You should note this one. You should even write here, NB in capital. This one, may, you may find it in your examination. Discuss what a is or how to transform a social being into a social being. A social being meant someone who is not yet socialized. Someone who is not yet socialized or does not yet know, hasn't internalized the practice and society's ways of life, that is the culture, and is transformed into one who is. So the first part that is a social being is up to there. Uh, someone who is not yet socialized, does not yet know, hasn't internalized the practice and society's ways of life. This social being is one who is transformed into one who is socialized, one who knows, one who has internalized the practice and society's ways of life. This process is complex and cannot be expected to take place by chance. So as you are in school, you are continually being socialized. You are continually being transformed. A social being is somebody, for example, yesterday, was it yesterday or uh, on Monday? There were people who are there were students who were reporting to Machakos University. They have not yet been socialized into the university life, so they are associated into the university life. But by the time they will be completing their education in Machakos University, they will have become socialized and become social in the university life. Right now they are wondering how university life is. Remember yourself when you are freshers and you entered Machakos University. 
you are from a life where you knew either a secondary school where you, you used to be uh, crossed in from January to April, maybe apart from going for half term once, maybe uh, one, one week, you are always in school. You come to Machakos University where you are free to do anything. Anything that goes is, is usually, you usually did that. Uh, you have now become socialist. This one, you are that, you have become that. You have become that. So we are looking at Duncan sociology of education. We have talked about the social facts of education and their sociological functions. We, previously, we had seen what social facts are, relationships, the cultural and cooperative research, and the like. Then we look at John Dewey, 1859 to 1952, on what did John Dewey talk about education? John Dewey is a renowned educationist and philosopher. The concept of educational sociology was first used by John Dewey. He's the one who came up with this term, educational sociology. He taught at Chicago University where he founded a laboratory school. A laboratory school is a, like a school that was used as a, as a place to test some social aspects that that were were being looked at in education it just doesn't mean like uh, the the lab that you usually use for chemistry or science and the like there educational concepts were to be proved and challenged in school practice so the laboratory school was to be used as an, an a place where they would test some facts or concepts John Dewey observed the disruptive effect of rapid urbanization on community lives, community life structures. Rapid urbanization on community life structures and inability of school and church at the time to cope with those changes. We said that the sociology of education uh, began during the industrialization period or revolution. That means that during this period, people moved from the rural areas to come to the, the towns or urban centers because they, they got jobs in the industries. And because of that, there was, if you look at uh, the slums, the life of people in the slums, you see the, 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 the problems people face. So the same thing happened during this period. People had a lot of problems because they have moved from rural areas where they had a particular way of living. Now they are in the urban centers. Houses are squeezed together. There are no playgrounds, etc. And children were suffering. Their parents were suffering. So the social, there was a lot of social problems. And therefore, he observed the disruptive effect of rapid urbanization on community life structures. Community life structures, the way people do things in the society, in a community that they were used maybe to living in villages where they would help each other. They come to town, whereby after ukikosa chumvi hujui utaenda kuwa banani. Ukikosa, pengine hakuna maji. In the village, you used to go to the river to fetch water. So many problems. And the inability of schools and the church at the time to cope with those changes. He observed that children were being inadequately facilitated to fit into the new urban social life. I don't know whether any of you have ever, your families have moved from the rural areas to urban centers. And then because you have moved to urban center as children, you had your friends. Now you are in a new place. How do you make friends? Where do you go to play football the way you are doing the village or the like, such things? They had inadequate, being inadequately facilitated to fit into the new urban social life. 
if also confused adults in the urban environment. So he had, he, this was his observation, he founded a laboratory school. And uh, uh, it was, for example, if it is in Machakos University, you may take a certain area in Machakos University, like um, where the School of Education is, is those offices. And as them hapo, ataanza kufanya research yake hapo. People who will be going to that area will start doing research on that. So he came up with this ideal school, an ideal school. He suggested an ideal school that would prepare children to live in the urbanized society. He suggested an ideal school that would prepare children to live in an urbanized society. The school should teach and develop in learners a spirit of cooperation. That means when the children go to school, they should be helped to learn a spirit of cooperation. That means that people who stays together and work together uh, in harmony, in unity, in peace, cooperate with each other. Teach them how to elicit cooperation, both in class and outside. The school acting as a second home, a miniature society that met the child's needs, hope and interest. So, it, the school should have that atmosphere that the children when they come to school they would feel that they are at like they are they have they are in the second home maybe when you went to boarding school or yeah the boarding school for the first time i don't know how you felt did you feel as if you wanted to go back home to be back in your day school or did you fit in because of the atmosphere, but atmosphere, the way it was said. The school will try to develop a social consciousness in the, in the, in, in the child. So this, the school would have to try to develop social, consci social consciousness is making the child conscious of what is going on in the social arena. That means when they are with others, they should be conscious of who they are and how they are supposed to behave and how they are supposed to deal with others in, in, the, in the society. The school is to be representative of the society outside. That means that those people, the teachers who are the agents of socialization in the school would be the representative, would be the ones who will be teaching these children how to behave in the society, or what they are supposed to know about the society. They represent the society outside. The school must enable the child to be aware of himself in the society. That means that this child was to be taught who he is, who he is. Enable the child to be aware of himself. Nini muna nisumbua sana na yini kono muna rift. The, enable the child to be aware of himself in the society. For example, if I asked you, you are allowed that in the class right now, who are you in the society? Are you a part of the society? Do you make any contribution to the society or are you just there? So, the school well, is important because it helps the, 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 the learner to identify himself as himself and his importance. Why are you, or what is your purpose? In your, fam in your own family, let's start from the, your family, where you are born. Do you have any contribution that you make? Are you important in that family? Or if, for example, if you got lost today, Will they miss you? 
or will they not miss you? Some of you may be saying that you are not valued by your society, but you as a person, you are a person of value to yourself, to your school, to your family, to the whole society. In the ideal school, the child's social life would prosper and ultimately improve society and enable the expectation of the larger society to be met. That means that your social life, you are a person who's supposed to prosper, who is supposed to do well in your life so that when you go out of Machakos University as a teacher, you'll be expected to contribute to the society. That's what that point means. According to Dewey, the development of social efficiency is one of the aims of education. Development of social efficiency. When you talk of social efficiency, is using or utilizing the resources that are there without wastage. You yourself, as a person, if you are given 500 shillings, how do you utilize that 500 shillings? Do you go and buy things that are not necessary? The wants that I want this, I want that. Or do you buy that thing that you need that is very important that you cannot do it? When you become a society, a person in productive in the society, will you be a wastage person, people, a person who will be wasting resources? Or will you be a person who will be using resources usefully? To him, the, social, the school is a social institution. That means that it is an institution that belongs to the society, that helps the society. Kaidri, 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 stop raising your hands. Stop raising your hands. The school should be organized in such a way that the activities of the outer world are reflected. Activities of the outer world are not reflect, are reflected. Another point is that education takes place with the participation of individual in social activities and relationship within the fellow human beings. When you are being educated, you have to participate in, in, in social activities. Right now, you are in class. You are listening. You are participating in the listening. You are supposed to be allowed 290. Out of the 290, only one that 34 are present. Where are the others? Or are there people who are sharing a laptop or a phone? That means you'd be more than that. So you are supposed, in education, you are supposed to participate. You are supposed to interact with others. Do you help that education is necessary for health living in society as a bridge between innate nature of the child and the social needs and demands? Innate nature is the, the way you have been born. So you need to, to be developed more, uh, you need to develop more than the knowledge or the, the abilities that you are born with. So you need new skills, you need new knowledge. You need new knowledge. You need um, to learn about 
things like moral beliefs and the, the new attitudes and the like, so that you can fit well in the society. This sounds for the development of sociology of education. This one for the development of sociology of education. This is an activity that you're going to do. Watch this video and using bullet points, identify five reasons that lead to the development of social education. This one I will not give, it's not in these notes, so you must make sure you, you watch that video and write those points. And these activities, don't take them for granted. Some of the questions in the examination and even the cut will come from those activities so that we can see whether you're just taking those activities for granted or you are doing them. Further development in sociology of education. Apart from uh, Emil Denkem and John Dewey, there were others who came up with things, uh, some perspective on sociology of education. In 19, that is a hen, Sir Fred Clark's proposed that a sociological approach to education can concretely be applied in the planning of an education program geared towards producing citizens with char characters of the type preferred in the society. With characters of the type preferred in the society. So education programs geared towards producing citizens with characters of the type preferred in the society. Hence, the content of education should have the common purpose of deliberately training individuals for citizen consciousness. That means whatever content in your curriculum, the content or the topics that are covered in every subject or every unit should help the learner to, have, to gain in citizen consciousness. That means he'll be aware of what is required of him when he becomes a citizen of the society. A German sociologist by the name Karl Mannheim came to view education as a social technique which, would, which could be used to socially control the society and whose program could also be used to improve the society social techniques which could be used to socially control the society so con when we talk of control it means that people will know what is to be done or what should not be done in the society that is control enabling people to live in such a way that they do not disturb others or they do not go against the social norm that is control and whose program could also be used to improve the society. Still, whatever content in the, in the education should enable people, if they, they find that there is something that is not being done in the society, they identify the need and they come with a way of meeting that need in the society in order to improve it. In the 1950s, W.A.C. Stewart proposed a training course for teachers, which would begin with a basic knowledge of sociological issues such as social structure, social structure, control, change, and others, before delving in the application of sociology in the realm of education. So, so Stewart, Propose that the training course should have sociological issues, social structure. And last week, I thought I think we talked about social structure, control, change, and others. As we continue with our topics, we'll come across some of these, and they were introduced by Stewart before delving into the application of sociology in the realm of education. So before you go to school to be teachers that is where you'll be applying sociology in education so you should learn the social structures of the education the control the change and the others the movement for the institutionalization of sociology of education made it 
appear made 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 its appearance early in the 20th century in form of courses for the training of teachers in such institutions as Columbia and Stanford universities. So these ones were the first two trained teachers. It came in the form of organization, National Society for the Study of Education in USA. This began in 1928 to sponsor research work and to publish the results in the professional journal, Journal of Educational Sociology. The institu institutionalization of sociology of education. What does that mean? Institutionalization of sociology of education. We talked about sociology as a discipline. If you remember last week, that means it is taught as a as a field it's as field of study thought as a subject and it began it began in 1928 so those are others who came up with development uh, in sociology of education we go on to the new sociology of education in the 19th in the early 1970s, a different and altogether more controversial approach to the discipline was developed, was developing the so-called new sociology of education, NSOE, exemplified by the early work of Michael F. D. Young, Basil Bernstein, and Pierre Pierre Boudieu contrasted with the old sociology of education approach of looking at educational opportunity and social mobility within an industrialized democracy known as the political arithmetic traditional tradition within the UK, whilst in the US such an approach is sometimes called educational sociology. So the old approach was looking at education opportunity and social mobility within the industrial democracy. That means that industrial, industrial democracy was during the industrial revolution. So the new approach, the new approach, that is the new sociological education, is based on what is happening now in the in the in the world previously it was because of the industrial revolution whereby most people were moving from the rural areas to the urban areas today we see even the rural areas are well developed and and therefore there is the need for the new sociology of education it matters in reproducing social inequalities the poor the rich in the societies what is the teacher's role in bringing about these social inequalities in the news Socio sociology of education. Education is no longer seen as a primary progressive. Maybe in our, our uh, Kenyan country before the before independent. There are very people who, few people who are the Kenyan people who are educated, and therefore they were being educated to increase uh, to, uh, for a greater equality and increase personal autonomy. People would become better off when they got education. But look at our country now. There are so many people who are tamaking who have even PhDs, they don't have a job. So education is the reproduction of social inequality 
it is not like before. You get educated, you complete your job, you, you complete your education, you get a good job. Today, you complete your education, there is nowhere to go. Social inequality. The as new sociology of education so to focus on the curriculum as an appropriate topic for sociologists of education to study. The curriculum. What is the curriculum? You went through the curriculum development last semester, so you know what a curriculum is. The potentially liberating or liberating activities of teachers and teacher educators themselves. They were agents of potential social change. Persistent social class inequalities within the education system, similar to the political arithmetic tradition, but their proscribed remedies differed significantly. So they looked, the new sociology of education looked at the curriculum, the, liberation, the liberating activities of the teacher and the teacher educators. Do the teachers liberate learners? Do they help them to see the social change they can cause in the society? Uh, does education help in social inequalities, in helping those who are being educated to be socially equal, or does it even increase the inequality? And we said that it increase in most cases it will help, but in some cases it will increase the inequality. We have said you started with people who went up to class eight, others class form four. That's a Nyinyimuko university. When you are together, you are not equal because you have gained more knowledge than the class eight. So they will feel that nini muna jiona sana. Mutu a drop out to a class eight at aona wewe, you are very high, you are beyond him or her. So it increases social inequality. Concerns or issues of, for sociology education. What does sociology of education deal with? It deals with the following categories of problems. The relationship between the education, educational systems and the rest of society, including the economy. That is, links between education and the rest of society. When you talk of educational system, we are looking at, for example, Kenya, we have had three educational systems since independence. There was the seven, four, three, there was seven four two three. There is the eight four four. Then there is the CBC. Those are the education, educational systems, and the society. So how was the first educational system, uh, and how did it help the society? How does the eight four four? What are the problems of eight four four in the society? Then CBC. How is it affecting the society? The next one, the function of education in the society. We listed this, the functions of education in the society. Oh, we are going to list them later. We look at what is the, the education does for society. Although we mentioned some earlier. The inter internal structure of education, for example, relationship between teacher and student, and in general, roles and behaviors of the various participants in the education system. That is the teachers. What is the role of the teacher, the administrator, the student? We'll be looking at the role of the teacher and the student later as we continue with our units, with our, with our topics. In this case, education is con considered as a social system in itself and possibly as an organization. We'll also be looking at a school as a social organization. This is commonly referred to under the title, the school as a social system. So we look at the characteristics of a social organization and whether a school has those characteristics. The social aspects of the theory of learning. 
this one theory of learning you learned in eps or you are running it this you are learning you are doing learning psychology studio psychology of learning you are at that level so that one you will learn it in psychology function and contribution of education So, functions, contribution and purpose of education in society. Sociologists want to establish the extent to which those functions are met. Generally, education is considered as having the following important functions. So, education has desirable functions or positive functions and this, this undesirable uh, functions or negative functions. The first, you look at desirable or positive functions of education. Socialize those being educated. That means when you go to a social institution, you are a social. And after leaving it, you'll be social. You're being socialized. Transmit culture. That means the culture of the society is transmitted to the person being uh, socialized. Develop useful and employable skills. Develop useful and employable skills among those being educated. Develop useful and employable skills among those being educated. We have already mentioned that. Useful and employable skills. So you are learning the skill of being a teacher so that you can be able to be employed after this, this course. Bringing brings about personality and behavior change. I, I, is your personality and behavior the same as you entered class one? or as you have been educated from primary, secondary, now your university, have you changed your personality? Have you changed your behavior? Promote physical, mental, and moral growth. Physical, ulikuwa kamtoto kadogo pengine like three feet when you are entered, uh, maybe class four, now you are five feet, seven inches, and the like. Mental, your mentality you have you can be able to perceive and reason reasonably or logically because your 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 mind your thinking capacity has been growing and improving because of what you are being taught moral the way you behave the way you believe the way you do your things have also changed Foster economic, social, and technological change. Economic, you can be able to use your money better because of being educated. Socially, you can be able to interact with people from different places. Technologically, you can be able to use different types of machines and, and the like. Enhance social integration and national Enhance, enhance social integration, integration and national, national unity. unity. That, that means, means um, you are able to be at peace and in harmony with people from all tribes of the country. In class, you are mixed up. You have people from different tribes in the country of different cultures in the society in the in our country and the, lastly prepare and facilitate individuals to obey authority and laws in society and uh, this one because of the discipline the rules and regulations that are set in school when you follow them without breaking them you you become a better person 
because you are a person who can be able to control your your behavior that will help you when you come up now to be a, a, a free citizen you are no longer in an institution of learning you are a citizen free french citizen you'll be able to follow the rules and regulation of the society another one is empower individuals to develop their own ideas opinion responsibility decision making and independent thinking and independence develop empowers individual to develop their own ideas that means you can come up with your own ideas and your own opinion if somebody tells you something you do not just take it for granted that it is true you can look at it and have um something to say about it to say that this is not proper i should not do that uh sababu, according to me it is not the right thing responsibility responsibility that means that you take responsibility of your actions you take responsibility of those things that you are supposed to, to do or uh, or you are required to do or the tasks that you are required to do and the like you make a proper decision because you have the fact the knowledge the understanding you have the wisdom you have gained from education you are an independent thinker and you are free you can do things on your own you do not rely on others what do we mean by negative functions as you're being educated you have said that there is social stratification or class formation for example, I've been saying that you who are educated to university level, Ukienda back home, some of you are very proud. Right? Because I'm a university student, I do not socialize with those who are class eight dropout, those who are your friends in primary school. That is, education now has brought the social stratification, the division of classes because of the education level or because that of those who are educated have uh, uh, got good jobs and they are well paid those who are less educated have poor jobs and they are less paid therefore they are different at different classes ethnic and racial differentiation when you go, we look at education institutions, for example, Machakos University, I usually see notices. Uh, Kisi, we are meeting at this, in this area. Campus, I don't know whether they have their society. Kisi, Luos, Luyas, Carriages, that is ethnic and racial differentiation. And it's brought about by people within the, the university is in an education institution, and but they still bring about such. We have also social control and acquisition of power by individuals. Look at some of your leaders. They are those who, they are, because they are well educated, they want to, and they have they they have that ability of being. Uh, they are charismatic. They have the ability to talk to people in a group. They become now leaders. They, 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 we, we, we say that they acquire power or, and in most cases you find So it is from education that social control starts. Your leaders, are they good leaders or are they there to gain? They, they are there because they are gaining something. Acquisition of competitive rather than cooperative attitudes in society. Look at what has been happening in our society, especially in examination, the cheating. The cheating is a result of competitive competition. People competing to be to have better grades so that they can get places in universities so that they can they cheat also in universities so, so that they can pass exams so that they can get jobs so that is uh, it has education has brought about competition 
other than cooperation. So even in the society, people are competing. I'm the richest, I'm the nini, all that. Sociology of education is also looked at, it also looks at the social aspect of learning process. For example, how does socialization take place in general? The learning process. Socialization starts at the at home. When the baby is born, they start learning from the, their mother. Their mother is the one who is closest to them. So they start learning immediately they are born. They will within the first one month, they will know the voice of the mother, they will know the voice of the sibling and the like. What Lord do the family, the church, the professional association, etc. pray? We look at this as we continue with our topics. Uh, how do external socializing agents influence students' behavior in school? External socializing agents are the peers, the church, the politics, the economics, and the like. We look at that as we continue. What socialization gap should be? Should the school seek to fill the socialization gap? There are those that the things that the, the school does, there are those things that the family does, the church does. So we look at the roles of the school in the socialization process. So sociology study the learner's learning environment and how it influences socialization. The learning environment influences and determines a learner's acquisition of mental and social knowledge, their present and future abilities, attitudes for interaction and cooperation, behavior and personality growth, individual experiences and discriminations. So your learning environment is, for example, the home background from where you have been raised up. How is that learning environment? So it will influence and determine your acquisition of mental and social knowledge. Mental is how uh, your, your, think, your thinking processes and how your mind can be receptive or non-receptive of the knowledge that you'll be learning in school. The presence of future abilities, attitudes, and the like. Teachers need to be aware of the role that the family peers, community members, etc. play in the socialization process and how this affects learning and the general well-being of learners. And that brings us to the end of our long topic today. I have seen so many hands being raised. You are not supposed to raise your hands during the, the, during the, the, the lesson. You write on the public chat. I'm going to comment on what is on the public chat because you are off the, the, the speaker. You cannot speak, but you can write on the public chat. And before I continue, I want to, to say something on the LMS. Every week, you're supposed to download the lesson of that week. For example, this, the, the notes for this lesson, you are supposed to start downloading at midnight today, up to next Tuesday, 20, uh, 11.55. If you not have downloaded it, you'll not be able to access it. I also enabled you to, to be able to download last week's notes up to 20, or 20, up to next week, Tuesday, midnight, uh, before midnight, five minutes before midnight. So last week's note and today's note, you go to your LMS and download them before Tuesday, 11.55. If you not have done that, you will not be able to access the notes. And then, if you are required to say that completion, you look, you read, don't just download. There are things that you are required to do. So make sure you do those activities according to the requirement in the LMS. 
otherwise you will not be able to continue for example if you are told to 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 mark as complete completed you must you must indicate that in the lms otherwise you will not be able to continue with that then on fifth week of learning you have a sitting cut seventh week in the lms there is an assignment that you have to do each one of you must do it on the lms an assignment that assignment will be marked as part of, a, of one of the cuts. On the ninth week, on the ninth week, there is a group discussion, group uh, uh, forum. There is something that you're supposed to, to read on, research on, and then you must, must at least have three entries in that discussion forum each one of you if you not have done that then it it you, you you lose because it is part of the continuous assessment assignment on seventh week ninth week there is discussion forum each one of you is supposed to participate in that now I'm looking at the public chat. I don't know where I'll study. I'll, I'll look at from the time I was asking you to define education. My network has been well throughout. It was not going off. Um, Rawlings, Davis, Amanda. That was Edwin Career Network is stable now. My network has been good. I have a stable network. When you go offline, you usually click um, reload so that it can, you can come back. You reload to be back. You right click and reload. Those who have been raising their hands should write on the public chat in future. Thank you for that. Those Edwin, Karaoke, Mildred, Getende, Mary, Joshua, Purity, that, that 490. Thank you for that. I cannot postpone the deadline for the notes because I said your friends who have downloaded should help you to download. Then later on, you'll come to me personally and tell me, but I'm not postponing that. That is a requirement in my, on my part. I should not postpone that the dead rains. So get the notes from your friends. Edmond, I don't know what you mean by had to compare si you help yet. Edwin, Edmond, what do you mean by that? Amanda. The forum is on the LMS. The forum, discussion forum on the LMS has to be done on the LMS. You, uh, the, uh, there is a question on the LMS. You read about it, then you make a comment on the forum on the LMS. You just click the, uh, the forum and then you come, you at least three times in that forum. By ninth week, Gena, you should have finished. You should have finished with your your your, your piece. The cut will be on the fifth week of the 
starting from count four times from last week, four weeks. After you have learned for four weeks, we do the cut on the fifth. Three entries means that you, as you read other people's comment, you start maybe by making one comment on the forum. Unagojia wengine waseme juya that topic, you contribute at least three times. Sawa sawa, George, Odoyo. Next forum, next lesson will be followed by the before the next time, not today. Those who have not cleared their fees, uh, I'm talking about what I'm required to do. I'm supposed to put the notes on the LMS, and on that LMS, they are supposed to be cuts, quizzes, and the discussion forum. And you people, you make your effort, I have done mine. Get your, the, those who have not finished their fees, get notes from those who have finished. They can download and help you. I said that we work as a team. Those who have finished their school fees, should help those who have not otherwise you should be having notes i'm saying that it will be physical cut not online cut physical cut god reading For 13, 18, 13, 18 and what? Emo, at Emo. We'll be having sometimes physical, but not always. Some. For the assignment on LMS, that is a requirement. Kevin, thank you. This one, the assignment on LMS will be on the seventh week. So by seventh week, you should have paid your school fees. Most of you should have paid your school fees. Imo, you should be attentive to what I'm saying. I'm not repeating that for Imo. Last week I was physical, not physical, na what water. So I will decide what when physical is to be done and when online will be done. In you are to, you have to be. I've said that some will be physical, some will be. Online. Some I'll just need you to download the notes and you need them. Learn from the from the notes. Otherwise, I'm not sharing notes with the class. Notes are on the LMS. If you have finished your fees. Some of you have finished their fees, so you download the notes and share with the others. If I share with you, you don't go to the LMS, so I'm not supposed to share with you. Go to the LMS. Ask those who have finished their fees help, to help you. They download the notes, they share with you. Use your laptops to download the notes from the LMS and laugh when I share. Who said about cut on LMS? <laughs> 